Prevalence of disease can significantly affect predictive values. Let's see how prevalence affects predictive values and how we can improve predictive values. In process of diagnosis, first we estimate pretest probability. This means how likely a disease is present based on history, physical examination, prevalence of disease, and other relevant information. After this, we perform diagnostic tests and then we calculate post-test probability. There are two methods of calculation of post-test probability. One is by predictive values and other is by likelihood ratios. Both predictive values and likelihood ratios are calculated based on sensitivity and specificity of test. Prevalence of disease can significantly affect predictive values. So we need to understand effect of prevalence on predictive values. Let's see how prevalence affects predictive values. First of all, let's calculate predictive values without consideration of prevalence. Suppose we have a diagnostic test with sensitivity of 80% and specificity of 90%. If test result is positive, we can calculate positive predictive value. Formula for calculation of positive predictive value is true positive divided by all positive results that is true positive plus false positive. In this case, positive predictive value is 89%. If positive predictive value of a test is 100%, everybody with disease will test positive with that test. In this case, positive predictive value is 89%. It means 89% chances that this positive result is true positive or 89% chances that person has disease. If test result is negative, we can calculate negative predictive value. Formula for calculation of negative predictive value is true negative divided by all negative results that is true negative plus false negative. In this case, negative predictive value is 81%. If a test has negative predictive value of 100% and if somebody tests negative with that test, it means he does not have disease. In this case, negative predictive value is 81%. It means 81% chances that this negative result is true negative or 81% chances that person is healthy and does not have disease. Now let's calculate predictive values with the known prevalence. Suppose we have a total population of 1000 and prevalence of a disease in that population is 20%. Based on this prevalence, 200 people will have disease and 800 people will be healthy. We have same diagnostic test with sensitivity of 80% and specificity of 90%. Based on sensitivity of test, we can calculate number of true positive and false negative test results in 200 people who have disease. Similarly, with help of specificity of test, we can calculate number of false positive results and number of true negative results in 800 people who are healthy. When we calculate predictive values, positive predictive value in this case will be 66% while negative predictive value is 94%. So we can see when we calculated predictive values with the known prevalence, both positive and negative predictive values are different than in last example. Now let's see what is effect of change in prevalence on predictive values. Suppose we have another area 
where prevalence of same disease is 5% and total population is 1000. Based on this prevalence, only 50 people will have disease while 950 people will be healthy. We have same diagnostic test with sensitivity of 80% and specificity of 90%. Based on sensitivity of test, we can calculate number of true positive and false negative test results in 50 people with disease. Similarly, based on specificity of test, we can calculate expected number of false positive and true negative results in 950 people who are healthy. When we calculate predictive values in this case, positive predictive value will be 29% while negative predictive value will be 98%. So we can see when prevalence has decreased, positive predictive value has decreased as well, while negative predictive value has improved. Let's summarize findings of these examples. When we did not consider effect of prevalence, positive predictive value was 89%. And when prevalence was 20%, positive predictive value was 66% and with 5% prevalence positive predictive value was 29%. So we can see when prevalence is low positive predictive value is also low. And in last both situations positive predictive value is significantly different than in first example when we did not consider effect of prevalence. Similarly, negative predictive value was 81% when we did not consider effect of prevalence. And with 20% prevalence, negative predictive value was 94%. And with 5% prevalence, negative predictive value improved to 98%. So we can see with decrease in prevalence, negative predictive value improves. And in last two examples, negative predictive values are quite different than negative predictive value in first example when we did not consider effect of prevalence. In summary, when calculating predictive values, we need to consider effect of prevalence on predictive values. And positive predictive value decreases with decrease in prevalence while negative predictive value improves with decrease in prevalence. Suppose we have a population in which same disease does not exist. All positive test results in this situation will be false positive. So positive predictive value in this case will be 0% while negative predictive value will be 100%. So we can see extreme changes in prevalence can result in extreme changes in predictive values. In our example, when prevalence of disease was 5%, positive predictive value was only 29%. It means 29% chances that a positive test result is true positive. So when prevalence of disease is low, positive predictive value is also low. So if prevalence of disease is 5%, with this test positive predictive value is 29%. And in most cases, prevalence of disease is not even 5%. So we can expect positive predictive value to be even lower than this. So how we can improve positive predictive value? As we cannot increase number of people with disease, however, we can decrease number of healthy people in equation and that will result in less false positive results and a better positive predictive value. So in this example, if instead of 950, we have only 50 people in healthy group, positive predictive value will improve to 89%. So how we can decrease number of healthy people? We can decrease number of healthy people by performing diagnostic tests only on people with reasonable pretest probability of disease and by performing screening tests only on high risk population. 
So if we perform diagnostic tests only on people with reasonable pretest probability of disease and perform screening tests only on high risk population, it will decrease number of false positive results and will result in better positive predictive value. Another factor that affects predictive values is sensitivity and specificity of test. If we keep specificity of a test constant, increase in sensitivity will result in corresponding increase in negative predictive value. And when sensitivity of test is 100%, negative predictive value is also 100%. And when negative predictive value of a test is 100%, that means all healthy people will test negative with that test. So tests with high sensitivity and high negative predictive value help in ruling out disease. Positive predictive value also improves, but not to the same extent as negative predictive value. Similarly, if we keep sensitivity of test constant, Increase in specificity will result in corresponding increase in positive predictive value. And when specificity of a test is 100%, positive predictive value is also 100%. So everybody with disease will test positive. So tests with high specificity and high positive predictive value are used for confirmation of disease. Negative predictive value also improves, but not to the same extent as positive predictive value. In summary, prevalence of disease can have significant effect on predictive values, so we need to consider prevalence of disease when calculating predictive values. We can improve positive predictive value by performing diagnostic tests only on people with high pretest probability of disease and by performing screening tests only on high risk population.